So in today's job market, a high school diploma is typically a prerequisite for higher education and many employment opportunities. Like failing to complete high school can have adverse effects, such as low wage poverty and limited job prospects, which can negatively impact one's health. Research indicates that obtaining a high school diploma leads to a significant increase in wages compared to those without one. Therefore, understanding the factors that are associated with high school graduation rates is very crucial. So my research goal is to identify these factors to assist parents, schools, and students in improving graduation rates. So initially, my research. So to achieve this goal, I have obtained a data report from Chicago Public School System that includes information from over five hundred schools, including elementary, middle, and high school. The data set compri comprise very metrics such as high school graduation rate, teacher and parental involvement, school safety, and the median income in school district. Discrete. So, initially, my research aimed to the investigate the factors associated with graduation rate across all three school levels. However, upon review, I found no records of, of graduation rate for middle and elementary school. So, therefore, I will only focus on the high school graduation rate. Like to achieve my research goal, I used two method and my simple method will be the ANOVA based on the linear model. My advanced method is the principal component regression model. So in my advanced method, principal component regression, like PCR is an unsupervised method. And secondly, P PCR is a statistical method used for the regression analysis when there are many predict variables with high correlation between them. And also PCR reduces the dimensionality of data by transforming the original variables into smaller number of uncorrelated principal components. So PCs are then used as a predictor in a regression analysis rather than the original variables. And the key idea is that often a small number of principal components serves us to explain most of the variability in data, as well as the relationship with the, with the response. And for the model equation, so uh, we have the n by p matrix and n is the observation and p is the number of predictors. So the first PC, are calculated as a linear combination of original predict variables. And the first PC is equal to A1, X1 through the AP, XP. And the PC2 equal to B1, X1 through the BP, XP, <clears throat> and so on. So the PCR model equation is then Y equal to B0 plus P, B1, PC1, B2, PC2 through the P, BK, BK, PCK. So in this case, Y is the response variable, and the B1, B2, B3, B0, BK are the regression coefficients for the PCs. So there are some limitations of this method. Firstly, PCR assumes linearity between the predictor variables and the response variables. And second, the interpretation of PCs can be very difficult as they are a combination of original predictor variables. And the PCR assumes the important variables are linear combination of original variables, which may not always be the case. And thus also the selection of number of PCs to retain can be very subjective and may affect the performance of the model. So PCR is not effective for the categorical variables because when performing eigenvalue decomposition for correlation or covariance matrix to find the principal components, which only work for the continuous variables. So there are some important findings for my method. For the simple method, like we are 95% confident that there several variables are significant 
in the graduation rate. So this variable include the college in enrollment rate, college eligibility, average explosion scores for ninth grade, average student attendance, instructional score, and the safety score. And when we summarize the model, we will see that most of the variables have the positive correlation between um, my X variable and Y variables, but only the safety score has a negative like correlation, which is very impressive. And uh, basically it seems one, when safety score increased by one unit, the graduation rate will decrease by 0 0.28 percentage. So to perform the advanced analysis, I choose the PCR method based on the covariance matrix because each continuous variable has the same skills and there is no evidence to suggest to use in correlation matrix. Through the script plot analysis, I determine at least four pieces are required to explain at least 80 of the variability. And these four pieces account for 83 <coughs> in total variability. Upon analyzing the loading score of PCs, I found a safety score and college, college eligibility have the most significant contribution to the first PCs, while community area number is most substantial for the second PCs. Median in thousands is the most sub substantial contribution to the third PCs, while world is the most significant contributor to four species. Like in summary, the area, median income, city score, and college eligibility are associated with the graduation rate based on the results of the PCR analysis. So I, when doing that kind of data analysis, I have some problem like encountered. Like for the very first problem is about the data cleaning. Like lots of them are useless and repeat measure variables. Like they are 81 variables in total, like initially. And I choose remove them, remove the useless, useless variables such as websites, schools. So I think there, the number of variables that remain is 26. And also many, Variables had a small portion of the missing value. Only 93 out of more than 50, 500 data sets remains because we are focused on the high school. And 14 of them are missing by response, which means we only have 79 data sets. Like also, I perform an outlier test to identify an outlier or leveraging point and remove them. And then I replace an A value with the mean of that category after remove some leverage point. So there is also an unsolved questions about the determination of using partially square method or PCR. So the main difference between PCR and, and the partially square PLLS is about PCR finds a Z value based on the variance X while PLS finds the Z value based on the covariance between X and Y. So PLS involves Y, which is a response variable, and does not suffer from the missing information problem in Y that PCR does. However, although I can determine like how many PCs are needed to contribute 80, at least 80% of variability in PLS, I don't know how to, like which factors contribute the most to each pieces. So that is all my presentation and all my progress. And this is a reference. Thank you.